another MyFixItUpLife.com How to Home Improvement Award winner. I hope you're watching. One of the things you need when you're digging a hole is a cup of coffee because I have every sound child, airplane, lawnmower, dog barking, and even wind around me. I drank all my coffee, but I had it out here to make this video. So this video is about how to dig a hole in the ground for a fence post or a deck. Now a hole is a bowl, but a hole for a post, that's a shaft straight into the ground. And there's a big difference so I've got some tools and some layout stuff and some measuring that'll get you down into the ground. Here's how you do it. Man, that's good. Step one. Layout. On the particular type of wood fence that I'm building here on this project, my layout does not have to be super exact. Um, and even though this is eight feet, if I were building a fence where the panels needed to butt into the posts and the posts needed to be dead plump so all those shapes could fit together, I would be laying out way more carefully than this. But what I've done is I've taken an eight foot two by four, measured from the center of the previous post hole, which I've already dug, and boom, popped it down here. I know because of that, that the center of my post hole is right here. I also have existing posts from the fence that's being removed. So I've got this axis of the whole equation set up. When I have to mark post holes a different way, I will take a screw and I'll jam it through a piece of caution tape. And then when I run a string or do whatever it is I do, I take this and I put it in the ground in the center of my post hole location, which is right here. So when I start to dig, I still know where the center of the hole is. If you blow your shovel in there and start digging, it's easy to lose the center of the hole. So I've done this a few million times before. Forgive me for over explaining. We'll use the tape measure later. Um, I don't always wear gloves, but when I use my two favorite other than a piece of equipment with an auger on it that costs like 25,000 bucks, my favorite hole digging implements, they are simple as simple can be. A long handled shovel and the artisanal digging bar. So the first thing we do is we know where our hole is. We take the shovel and we put the blade of it vertically. So you see I'm leaning forward. You don't start like this, that's a bowl. This is how you start a shaft. So that's straight up and down. I'm gonna widen it out a little. I like to make them about double the diameter. I'm using round poles on this one. The diameter or the width of the post I'm dropping in the hole. Over digging is just not that big of a deal. Yeah. Then I take four or so strikes into the ground here. By the way, the surface of the sun is a little cooler than it is right now, so I'm expecting the dew point of my shirt to change by the end of this video. So I'm already breathing hard. What I'm trying to do here is use the blade of the shovel like a real blade. And I'm trying to and succeeding, maybe you can bring the camera over here and show you in a second, at Defining the top of this shaft. And remember, 
A hole is a bowl. But a hole for a fence post or a deck post or anything like that is a shaft. A shaft has straight sides all the way down. And a bowl, you eat Captain Crunch out of. So the reason I like to use a shovel instead of what people often ask me, what about a post hole digger? I say, well, that's a nice name for a tool that doesn't really move this volume of dirt nearly as quickly as what I'm doing right here. And you'll notice that as I get down here, I'm making sure to keep the edges of this shaft going straight down. It's easy to veer off, especially the deeper we go. Now I gotta go where I live, near Philadelphia. So I gotta get this thing down 36 inches. Now, once I'm down about 16, 18 inches, I guess, and the hole is starting to bowl out. So I take the shovel and I turn it and I just start knocking off that tapering little edge in there, tapering little sidewall. And I keep going. Now, that right there, every post hole digger I've used, I don't know, that's like five scoops. And with a post hole digger, you can't really shear off these edges too much. Now, kind of banking on this hole not having too many rocks and roots and stuff in it so I can reasonably take you all the way down in a video that is shorter than Star Trek Beyond, which is coming out soon. So now you can know when I made this video. So what I'm going to do is work my way down through here and show you where I am so far. So, the hole is quite round, like this, and if you can see, this very flat light, I apologize if you can't, that the walls of the hole are going quite straight down. If anything, I'm going to want them to flare a little bit at the bottom, so when I fill that with gravel and concrete and the post, I've got room in there to wiggle it around. So I'm going to put the camera back here because the next phase for this, that looks about like where we were. The next phase for this is blunt force trauma. There's a rock in there. And we're getting a little past the leverage I have with the shovel. So now that's going to turn more into a uh, scooper and dirt remover than a, a hole digger. This digging bar, which is a flesh terror offer, I will tell you that right now, even if you have calluses, if you've done this before, you know. If you do it every day, you'll get enough ripped up hands, but if you don't, this is the land of gloves. I can feel the dew point of my skin changing. It's starting to rain inside this hole. So now that I'm in here, what I'm doing is I'm taking the shovel I'm not trying to empty out the whole hole in one scoop. I'm just trying to get the shovel in, wiggle it under the dirt, 
and up it comes. That's another reason for digging the hole about twice or even three times the diameter of what's going in it because you need to be able to do just what I did with the shovel. It needs to travel inside the hole so it can be a scoop. Doing that backward shovel blade thing again really works well. about two-thirds longer than the first half getting in the clay getting into some harder stuff so what I'm going to do is show you one or two more tips and then let you go on to your project really appreciate you hanging out I hope this was helpful because hole digging is hard but it's not impossible and it's one of the things that I really think that if you put your mind to it, and even on a job like this, there's 20 of these things. I guess I could do it in a whole day, but if you're doing DIY or something, you know, or you're doing this on the weekends or whatever, if you're doing a wood fence like this one, you can do two or three at a time. Take a break, go somewhere else, do them, you know, in the morning, at the night, whatever it is, so it's not this cataclysmic physical, physical event. Obviously, if you do this for a living, you got to get in and get it done. But even on a job like this, if I did have a piece of equipment, there's a trade-off for that stuff. I know they show them blowing through yards and fence panels and stuff on TV because they can. But if you also notice, a lot of those jobs are unlandscaped first. This yard is landscaped. There's grass here. There are walkways, sidewalks, and all kinds of stuff. Ugh. Nothing better for breaking off a rock than a digging bar. Here, I'll get that out. stone around here is very soft so that was in the way of the hole when I was able to do and I just dislodged this one but at any rate now that went through you can break through rocks it's just like a big um, chiseling hammer so sometimes I feel like an old-fashioned miner digging these holes so, you don't have to dig them all at once. And one thing I like to do, especially if there's a big excavation, is this dirt right here, if it's going to stay for any period of time, you know, more than a, more than a week, for sure, I would, if at all possible, try to find a way to put it on a tarp or something because it really only takes very little rain and that stuff is bulk and mine melded. Big time ballyhoo with the ground. So, um, tarp definitely choked the grass off a little bit, but the grass is coming no big deal. So this is pretty much it. The scoops are getting smaller. I have to dig down with the bar a little more. So final tip. A number of different ways to do this, of course. If I were smart, I would have put a mark on my shovel. And that would be however deep this is. I would put the mark of the depth. So I'm going 36. I'd put a mark at 36, wherever that is. But, I haven't gotten to that yet, 
keep thinking of it at times like now when I can't do it. So I do instead is I'll just take my tape and throw it down in there. I'm about 30 inches. I've got six inches to go. And because I am a little pedantic, and I like to quit, like to finish things, I am going to try and dislodge all this stuff and keep talking so that this video, it's my Fix It Up Life, how to dig a hole video that you've been kind enough to watch this whole time is actually done. How do you need it? Digging bar and shovel once or twice more to get down to 36. If you're wondering what else you could have been doing with your time, well, huh, there's a lot. Read Moby Dick, read the self-improvement book, swipe to the 10,000 other videos on Facebook, run a mile, donate to your favorite charity. One of ours is Habitat for Humanity, of course, where we've actually dug holes just like this. That's right, Roy Berenson from Popular Mechanics Magazine. Thinking about you, some projects we did years ago where we built a fence. So the proof will be in the pudding. I think I'm going to be at 34 by the time I scoop all the rest of this out. So you'll have to trust me that I take it to 36. You guys are awesome. The dew point on my shirt and my skin changed. It's hot. Hope you guys are well. I hope this was helpful. We always love to hear your questions, your tips, your tricks, hell, your criticisms. Bring them to us. Visit us at myfixituplife.com or watch more videos on YouTube. We're here and we like hanging out with you. Thanks so much. And good luck with your projects.